Dwayne Sweeney. Dwayne Sweeney. Sweeney's over. Can you please hand it over to your captain, Dwayne Sweeney? Welcome to Real Tales with Sweens, proudly brought to you by Fish City Hamilton. Fish City has been servicing the Waikato's fishing, boating and outdoor needs for over 30 years. And now, with the help of their online store, their great range of products and outstanding customer service are available across New Zealand. This episode, I'm back with Bonds to share some great insight into teaser systems for lure fishing when targeting marlin. We follow along the same lines as we did with the boat setup episode with the aim to share some of Bonza's insight and knowledge on a very useful tool when targeting marlin, in particular, striped marlin here in New Zealand. We both share observations from our experiences of fishing with a well set up teaser system. We break down the different types of teasers from surface chain teasers to dredges and the part that they play to help increase your chances. We also discuss how you can set up your system and the different levels of investment to do so, as well as an epic blue marlin tail. I have an awesome giveaway for all you listeners. The team at Bonds Lures have kindly donated a submission teaser. The team at Killwell Sports have also kindly donated a strip dredge and one of their brand new response manual life jackets. As you'll hear in this episode, these will be an awesome addition to your setup. The details to enter will be shared at the end of the episode. As always, the show notes will be available on the Real Tales with Sweens Instagram and Facebook pages, as well as the website, realtaleswithsweens.com. Good George have a 15% discount available for all you listeners. Just use the discount code REALTALES before checking out of their online store. The link for their store is also available on the realtaleswithsweens.com homepage. Lastly, I want to say a massive thanks to Bonds for coming on and sharing his knowledge with us again. Really appreciate it, mate. So join me as we get a real insight into teaser systems. Enjoy the podcast. Just uh, sitting here in Bonds' factory. We had a pretty epic day today. Um, Yeah, something pretty special happened. But this podcast is going to be based around teaser systems. It's one we've been talking about doing for a while eh? we want to kind of together share well i want to ask bonds the right questions to be able to share his knowledge and and his learnings of you know his fishing career and to be able to transfer that across and talk about the importance of the way that you do things etc so today's topic's teaser systems but i guess do you want to start us off with what happened today bonds yeah, it's pretty exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I wasn't even going to go fishing today, really. I had too much work. But um, with that cyclone coming and the call of a blue marlin, uh, there have been a few around. I um, got the work done and then um, we are out here about what, 11 o'clock, I guess. Yeah. 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 And then, um, yeah, had some good intel of where the boys have been getting some action. Shout out to the back of Queen's Boy there, which is pretty close for us. Eh? It's only like it's only like 150 meters, 50 meter line off the Cape, so it's only an hour hour steam off out of the, out of the bay from the ramp. So um, yeah, shot out there, put the gear in about lunchtime, and um, it's pretty choppy. Eh? It's pretty yeah. shitty out there. It wasn't very nice. No, no and, not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, and um, yeah, just just started working that area. We're like marked quite a bit of bait. Um, and just good structure there and just a general area where when the blues turn up it's a good depth line a good like I shouldn't say depth line but a good place to run in and out on you know mm. running from the drop off out to that 200 line and then coming back the fish seem to sit there and you can fish across current there normally which is ideal mm. um, and yeah we, we we've been going for a couple of hours marked a couple of bits of bait like pretty good looking sign and then seen a couple of boats hook up beside us we just did one extra pass just a bit deeper we got to the 190 and I wasn't really paying attention to be honest was, uh, <laughs> I, I just was. hear yeah <laughs> I know you were and I just hear big blue marlin and I look back and I just see a tail going down past the teaser I'm like holy shit man like, <laughs> anyway yeah pull the pull the teaser chain out, pull both chains out, 
fish comes back, has another crack as we're pulling it in. And then, you know, your curse comes. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess we'll talk about that. So on my boat, I think, oh, I've probably had maybe 14 or 16 fish come on my teaser. Like, they love it. it I think it's where it sits and presents. Mm-hmm. Like, it just looks really good, and we'll talk about that and, and the importance of, of running it, how we've set my boat up to run it and, like, how we're running it today. And they come hot on it, and then they don't bite anything. Like, I think of the 14... I've, so it's possibly more like I've had so many fish yeah. come on that thing the last three seasons and they don't touch a lot like I don't get them to bite anything else yeah um, yeah Yeah. I just haven't had any luck so I, today yeah. when it come like I guess from my point of view what I saw I was just sitting there facing back watching the spread and the teaser when you see a good teaser chain set up like it attracts your eye like you watch it quite heavily um, well, I do anyway, and and I guess a part of that is the fact that I've seen so many fish come on to mine and on friends' boats when I've been fishing with them when they're set up correctly, and this thing just inside out going away, like it's like it came from the transom and just three foot out of the out of the water, like the whole fish just backing away trying to eat this teaser, clean clean missed it, and then he I, he must have spun like on a dime, eh? Mm-hmm. And he was like. I just yelled, big yeah. blue marlin, yeah. big blue marlin on the teaser. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, obviously, Bond spun around, so the tail go in, but then it's, before you know it, it was back, and it was piling onto the teaser. And yeah. then, yeah, yeah, we pulled them both fast, out of though. the water. Yeah, yeah, straight out of the water. And then... Um, Did you turn? Yeah, just kept going, disappeared. Just, uh, I was like, ah, oh, man, I turned around. I marked the bite straight away. Mark, put my mark in. Turned around, did the figure of eight sort of turn, come come back on it, just came back, nothing. I said, like, ah, oh, put the teaser back in. As soon as I dropped the teaser back in, bang, there he was, straight mm-hmm. on it again. <laughs> Missed it again, pulled the teaser back in, and um, pulled the pulled the actual one of the lures right up into that spot, and um, by that stage, he's just gone straight across and s- smoked that other corner. Yeah. And that was it. And then, yeah, just quick reactions. I was just straight across, like, race, pull the boat out of gear, and I'm like, well, he's either on there or he's not. Yeah. And he was on there. Mm. And, um, yeah, and that was, the, that was the start of a bit of chaos, wasn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, it was. So, yeah, there was only two of us on the boat, and yeah, it was less, hard. very, yeah. less than <laughs> ideal conditions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so. so it was, um, yeah, it was, I guess I've, I've had some bites from Blue Marlin before, mm-hmm. but and there's going to be another podcast about Blue Marlin. Yeah. This one's not it, but just a little teaser there for your listeners. But I, I guess what I saw today was everything put in practice of what I've heard about. You know, like I've I've had them come up, I've had bites, but I've never had one hook like that. You know, yeah. and he was hooked properly. Yeah, and he fucking sent it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like it's it's a different ball game and yeah. it's a big fish like yeah. 600 pound yeah 600 yeah. pound yeah, yeah that, that that's a big fish yeah, it's a big fish yeah. it was a big fish big fish mm. on the little gear too yeah like so, hook, so yeah yeah so that that's a whole another dimension again mm. um and uh, also like it's just it's it's funny just like talking to you because we've been talking about this actually happening for a long time <laughs> yeah. and we had a chance at it with uh, last last mm. year after the podcast we did um, in your boat, um, and the, the the biggest difference that about the whole thing was is the speed of what happened mm. today compared to what happened last year. Yeah, you know, and I mean, as I say, this is a whole another podcast on yeah. on Blue Marlin, but that, that was pretty much the biggest thing is the speed differences in the two boats, mm. and you see the reactions. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, and part of that is like. The teasers that's yeah. the reaction that we're trying to get you mm-hmm. know like i've yeah i've had well oh, man that thing was hot i've never seen yeah. anything like i said yeah. to you you know like that was i think we were fighting the fish and i said like holy fuck that was the coolest thing apart from my wedding day yeah. and the birth of my two boys yeah. that's the coolest thing i've ever done in my life yeah and yeah. i was like fuck the ram shield yeah. like <laughs> yeah there's a big call there right? yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And I said to you after, I said, I don't think I'll ever see another bite like that in my life. Look, I mean, it, it doesn't happen often in New Zealand. Like, it's a rarity for sure. Um, but, I mean, y- 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 there's nothing saying, you know, you go to, a, you go to another fishery uh, where it is like straight blue marlin fishing. Mm. I, I don't mean to sound, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's pretty common place they like and we talk it's just so classic that it came on the teaser and we're going to do a podcast on the teaser uh teaser system and everything like it is stock standard that most of the fish that i see now mm. come on that teaser yeah the green one too eh? oh yeah on my boat yeah. the green one. Oh, it doesn't actually matter which boat i put it on yeah they, they love that green one yeah that green submission chain they just oh man well, it's the same on my boat yeah that's the one that they go after well it's yeah. only run one though yeah so but that's something else we can yeah. talk about i suppose we're kind of talking around the topic but yeah, yeah. that what today well, it's only because you're all pumped up about oh, it, yeah, I know. Like, like, i'm like yeah. shaking yeah. still yeah oh man that was like yeah that was proper that was real cool and it's just yeah i'm real excited to actually do the blue marlin mm. podcast off the back of that because yeah. i learned a shitload today um well I, I guess we've spoken a lot about it and i talked to chris ash about it mm-hmm. too when we went fishing and when we had some beers in that last um, summer mm. and you can see the importance of what you guys that know what to do do mm. you know and you're like oh fuck i get it you know like well we saw the your mate hooked a real nice one two days ago mm. and did, didn't stop the boat and that was a big big fish mm. and it died and then it's too much line out hard to lift it yeah yeah. I mean, there's a whole podcast on what we're yeah. on today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, that's another mm. s- story. I mean, we want to talk about the, the teasers that are set up. Yeah. Like, we're going to get way distracted on yeah. that. Like, as soon as you start talking about blue marlins. It's like, oh, and what be to a do blue marlin And what podcast. to do, you know, from bite through fight mm. uh, and through tease, the whole thing. Yeah. That, that's, that's a whole podcast th- mm. there, which is not yeah. what... <laughs> It's not the yeah. topic, is, you know, like <laughs> that's the problem, man. You know, yeah. like yeah. So fishing's a good um, rabbit hole to go down there eh? because it's so many different burrows. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, there's so many different mm. uh, things. You know, it's like just lure fishing in general. I mean, because that's what we're talking yeah. about. That is an art form, man. Like, all of these guys, it really frustrates me. I hear, like, so many guys are like, ah, dragon snag. There is no way mm. you will be an effective lure fisherman dragon snag. Mm. It, it's, it's just, there's such an art to it with that. The drag management, the angles you pull on the fish, all of these things. Mm. You know? So, I mean, and as I say, today, that was like, it was mean for me because it was a challenge. Like, it was a fish that you're like, oh, shit. Mm. Got a hands full here with this gear. Yeah. You know? So, but anyway. Anyway. It ended well. Yeah, it so, did. It yeah, did. you can tick that box. Yeah. Called, first, called my first blue marlin. Yeah. yeah. And a proper one. And a, yeah. Holy yeah. shit. It was real. Yeah. Yeah. But nah, there's, while well, just, while we're talking there, there's another topic too, like, angling technique and creating oh, angle I mean, drag control all of you, that so we can i mean that's today, another podcast yeah, but i mean just going back today again mm. if you would have told somebody that you caught that thing on three kilos of drag today yeah you said be like no way i'm like well, yeah i mean yeah you did i did uh yeah. we were there i i mean i was there we did it mm. like you know so you, you don't need drag to catch fish it's 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 angling and when to use drag mm. you know so yeah well, we were doing what at one stage 15 knots, 15 knots. and it was taking line it was taking line yeah 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 so that gives you an yeah appreciation for the speed that they can travel and he would have been not he wasn't going for it he wasn't up on top no. sending it at that stage no they just get down sea on you yeah and they get down sea and they can really go mm. so um and and it was like as i said the conditions were not you know good yeah. you just if I mean, you start to turn it around, you're back on it or anything like that, it just falls straight with water, which mm. we had a couple of waves come over. It was, it's not a nice feeling in a little boat, eh? No, 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 it wasn't. No, nah. nah. but anyway. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. So teaser systems. Mm -hmm. So we've talked the around it a bit, but I guess like if we talk about the pure fact of what we saw last year, what well, I'm behind my boat mm. when we had that bite from that blue marlin, mm. very lazy bite. Yeah. Like it looks at actually like when you look at the video first up like footage like, oh yeah it's a nice inside out bite but when you actually slow it down it's very lazy yeah and it's and then there's a couple of factors to that is the speed of my boat mm -hmm. and but today what that teaser did was trigger something in that fish that he fucking wanted it yeah you know like it that's what you're trying to create right with yeah. the teaser system T totally so right. you're trying to so you what or what you're trying to do is excited to get an aggressive bite out of the fish mm. so you know, it comes on a teaser, you've got no hooks in it, you pull it away from the fish. Like, I mean, as, as we're discussing today, you have many crash bites of the teaser. I'm like, nah, man, like mm. normally see the fish and can pull it away. And that's the ideal scenario is mm. you don't want the fish to get the to teaser get at all. Yeah. Like I don't tease it. And that's, that was what I started watching your videos. Yeah. And when you first got the teaser, you were actually trying to tease the fish and let it have it. Like mm. that's not what I'm trying to do with lure fishing. Mm. Um, maybe switching, yes. Like you want to tease it off, like get the fish fired up. I, I don't. I don't want to do that with uh, the lure fishing myself. Um, as soon as I see a fish in the gear, no matter where it is, teasers in. Yeah. But if I have a fish come on the teaser, I am like just boom, hit my reel and just pull it out of the water. I'm not trying to tease the fish at all. I don't want it to grab it. Mm. If it grabs it, well. So be it, mm. but I don't want it grabbing and I want it like, you know, I want to get that out of the water as quickly as possible. So, I mean, all you're trying to do with that teaser is, is pull them up, is pull them up, get them excited and then give yourself uh, um, uh, a more aggressive bite going away from the, from the boat. Hopefully that increases your hookup, mm. right? But so the thing with the teasers is running them in a position where most people would traditionally run their corners. Mm. So you've got a lot of white water, a lot of confused um, uh, wake in that. Um, all I'm trying to do there is create presence and commotion um, and then have my lures running back in the cleaner water further. So I'm, we don't have, I don't even start those lures till wave four on my boat. Mm. They're a long way back, yeah. you know? Like I've got the same distance as a, 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 a corner on my 35 foot Bertram that I ran mm. that's how far back they are but that allows me then to put the teasers into those positions they stand out more in that clear water because what I found is when I was fishing in Kona with um old Captain Brownie he's got a, a, a I think a 40 foot merit or 39 foot merit boat and it's got an extremely clean wake like just very little white water Fish on a Bertram or a Carbo or something like that has a lot of white water. And um, I just noticed that on his boat, we had a lot of really clean bites. Like, not many, like, where you just get that out of the rigger and knock it down. Whereas on the boats with a lot of white water, we get a lot of that kind of thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Where the fish just coming up, maybe can't see it that well, and just, like, gives it a whack to, you know, maybe just, or can't see the target properly, you know? Mm. So what I'm trying to achieve there is have the lures running in a cleaner position so when the fish drops off the teaser, it's in the cleaner water, you know? Mm. So um, that, that's, that's, the, that's my whole sort of idea around the, the teasers. Um, as far as, like, the position of the teaser, I think that's really important. Um, and this only comes through, like, trial and error, and you well a test for this is <clears throat> we traditionally on all our trailer boats and most of the launches that i ran on be, uh, like worked on in new zealand especially is we never had uh teaser reels in the roof or anything like that like that was like you never it's saw american that. sport fishing yeah exactly yeah. so um uh we always used to just run them off the transom and yeah we used to get fish to them but not that many you know so then start running them up in the rigger and as you know <laughs> how much of a difference that makes mm. like i mean I've, I've seen your videos with it get broken off your outrigger i don't know how many times now yeah you know yeah well the first um i did the second day i ran it from the rigger 
The first day I didn't get a fish didn't come onto it. But the second day I ran it, I raised four fish on the yep. teaser. Two of them cracked that eighty pound breakaway off the yep. rigger. Like so, the reason why I make this a point, mm. why why it's important. Okay, so you had your teaser chain out before, and you had oh, very few fish ever. Never had to. one ever on it. Okay, and I always ran one. Yeah, off the okay, cleat. Okay, so as soon as you put corner. it in the rigger, yeah, bang, there he is. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, the whole thing about it is, if you don't raise the fish, you aren't getting a bite. Yeah. So you, you you've got something there. There's, obviously, there's probably a fish there, mm. but he's looking at it going ah, uh, but now you've changed your presentation. And if you don't get that fish up in your spread, you aren't going to catch that fish. Mm. So it's got to be something to do with the way you're presenting your, 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 your teaser and your, your spread. So as soon as you start to put those in, bang, you're raising fish up on there. You're getting hotter attacks on your lures. Um, and that's, that's sort of the basis of the, mm. of, the, of the teaser system. And then obviously you throw the dredge in the mix and then you put your teaser chain on top of that. It gives you that dynamic of okay, we've got a bait ball with a push to the surface. Mm. You know, so it gives you that next dimension, that surface dimension from your dredge. Mm. Yeah, well, I can attest heaps to that in terms of that presentation because, well, like we talked about with the setup podcast that we did, literally changed the, got a good set of riggers, which and that's one thing I do want to talk about is the gear and the levels that you can mm-hmm. go into a teaser system. But we'll talk about that in a little bit, but. Like having a good set of riggers and then being able to because having a good set of riggers you can create you can put a teaser up in the rigger but mm. i could never have done that with my old riggers no because if a fish ate it would have snapped it yeah, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. it would have snapped it and yeah. or the yeah, all all sorts would have gone wrong you know so having a good set of riggers and then having the dredge and then now i've got the next level to that again mm. which is now i've gone to electric so yeah you know been lucky as to partner with Daiwa and to be one of their brand ambassadors so that's given me that opportunity to put that into my boat and people look and go oh it's overkill like what do you need that for you know in a four and a half meter boat well the proof's in the pudding mm-hmm. it catches fish yeah yeah but the whole thing is like I go back to that presentation thing again and like I learned that this year I fished in Kona and I fish beside boats with sonars. Wow, that's a humbling experience, man. Like if you don't have a sonar fishing beside a guy with a sonar and the fishing's hard, you're gonna get humbled. You know, so what I learned there was that you have to run straight over the fish. Mm. If you don't run over the fish, you aren't getting a bite. Like, so on the sonar, they mark it on the sonar, turn, get it on the bottom machine, as soon as it's on the sounder, they're going to get it to come up. Yeah, they've got a good presentation and he's going to come. Exactly. If yep. you, but um, what I found is they're obviously, like, they've got to like what they, they're seeing up there. They're not yep. just going to come. Yeah. So we had these boats that we didn't, were set up not that well before coming into the factory. And then we set them up. Their presentation's better. Still got the same guy driving, mm. but all of a sudden he's seeing fish yeah so what's that tell you <laughs> it's presentation yeah so that's what i'm saying about the teasers how you're presenting them you wouldn't have got those fish up you i mean i shouldn't say you wouldn't have but you were more unlikely to have got those fish up into your spread. if you aren't getting them up into your spread and they're not liking what they're seeing you are not gonna get the bites it's mm. as simple as that Mm. And it's been like we've proven it with like, you know, what we've done with you. We've done so many other boats have gone from catching nothing. The same guy driving, he doesn't know any different. And we've changed the setup and presentation and bang, they're raising fish. Mm. So it, 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 they don't just miraculously become way better fishermen overnight and run over more fish. Mm. They're still doing the same things they were doing. But the fish before didn't like what they saw. Mm. Chris Ash is a good example of that. Yeah. And he's a gun. Yeah, like, so that was his... Can't argue, he's not a good fisherman. No, he's a very good fisherman, <laughs> hey. Like, <laughs> yeah, like a freak. Yeah. And I fished with him a lot. And he's like one of my best mates. But 
he, when he had his trailer boat, I said, look, man, I said, you can't fish it like a launch. You know, he just, I said, you, you, you're too good a fisherman to be getting these results. You should be doing a lot better. And I said, look, let me do you a favor as a mate. If you're ever going to listen to me any time I go out fishing, because I'd never tell him what to do, <laughs> it, uh, is I'm like, let's change your riggers. Let's put four halyards in it. Get all the lures up in the riggers and, and change the way your boat trolls. We did that, and he's like, wow, man, boat troll's so different. Troll's like a 40-footer. I was like, yeah, it does. First day out, catch five, five miler. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, man, they love this boat, eh? I was like, you know, so, um, yeah, so that, I mean, that's, a, it's a, that, that's a, just another example of, of the presentation. And that's what that trip to Kona mm. this year taught me is just how much I've got to focus on um, presentation. Mm. You know, obviously, you've still got to put the boat in the right place, mm. but are you running over fish that weren't coming up yeah. before without that good presentation? Obviously, you are. Yeah, because Chris Ash, he's like the perfect example when I think of that, because I'm pretty sure that dude is part fish. Mm. Yeah, he knows how to find them. He, oh, like, he'll find one in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. And so that's a perfect example of showing the importance of presentation. So once you get the presentation right, he's obviously been running over them because he knows how to find them, yeah. but they haven't liked what they've seen. Exactly. Now they like what they see, yeah. bang, five in a day. Yeah, and that's where the, the teasers come into now. They're, you're, mm. they're helping you, but they're helping you um, like present better yeah. to the fish, but they're also trying to create, with them, are trying to create a stronger reaction for the bite, so hopefully I'll hook them better. Mm. You know, that's yeah. that's the real key to it all. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because, and it creates a footprint, right? Like a bigger footprint in the water. Like oh, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's definitely, it's like they'll come up, have a look. Oh, there's a lot more going on here than just four smoking lures, you know? Mm. And, and really all your lures are is just targets to carry hooks, mm. in all honesty. Yeah. That's what they are, <laughs> you know? So, um, but I mean... Yeah, so the teaser chains are one part of it, and then obviously the, the other really big part of it is the dredge. Yeah. And that's the silent achiever in my book, so. Yeah. You yeah, know? so talk to me about the dredge and how, because how long have we had dredges in New Zealand now? <sighs> oh. Wouldn't be 10 years yet, yeah, would it? Yeah, no, nah, well, yeah, it would be, about? Ten, it'd be about 10 years, because, um, oh, yeah, it'd be 10 years. Yep. Because I... I mean, how I got onto dredges was fishing with the guys white marlin fishing in um, in North Carolina, and as I, I think I've told the story in the past, I mean, I went and spent like three grand mm. the first day I ever saw a dredge work. You know, yeah. I went and bought a dredge, went and bought electric downrigger, you name it, <laughs> I bought it, man. Yeah. I'm like, I need one of these things, and yeah, I bought it back here, put it on my little tinny, went to Hokanger and saw the uh, like the amazing effects of it. Like the first day I ever used it, you know, like I was like, oh man, the stripies like these dredges too, and of course they do, mm. you know, like. But what what it what it does is it adds a whole other dimension into your spread. It's it's putting a, a underwater imitation bait school behind your boat. So when they're coming up, they're like, whoa, man, there's bait here as well, <laughs> you know. So, and what that does that triggers, especially on striped marlin. Blue marlin is a little bit different, but striped marlin is, is, is it, it, you know, especially if they're on bait balls and they're into that, that, that uh, it's triggering a feeding instinct in them, you know? Mm. So, yeah, your dredge is putting a whole nother dimension into it. And, like, uh, there's so many different styles of dredges too, you know, uh, of mm. what um, you can pull. I mean, pretty much the ones we pull here in New Zealand are the, the strip dredges. Um, I must admit, I was always in awe of the ones, like all the, the real fancy looking ones with all the swimming baits and all that kind of stuff. But I tell you what, the more I fished the strip dredge, it's pretty, pretty highly, it's pretty effective, eh? Like, mm. I, I must admit, like, I really like it, you know? Mm. Like, it does the job well, easy to use, looks real in the water, and um, it has that added flash too, which I really like, you know? Mm. Yeah, because I was... Um like I, I'll talk a little bit about my dredge and the mm. change that I was, so I've always run a dredge since yeah. I had the boat. Um, and I used to have these like holographic 3d baits. Mm. Like I bought this dredge, um, 
the dredge I bought, I bought from America. And the reason I bought it is it stacks down into like a small box. So yeah. I can, it's perfect for the little boat, mm. but, um, so it's where a strip dredge takes up, take up my whole floor, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when, I'm, when it's not, when it's not in, um, not in, in the water. So I had these little ho holographic baits and what I noticed is it looked mean, looked real good on the water, mm. but they're just a solid piece of plastic. Mm. There's no movement to them. Yeah. So they just like there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I saw something pop up the same company. And they made these little split tail ballyhoos and it was just two pieces of rubber mm -hmm. shaped like a ballyhoo they had a split tail like mm -hmm. well they're basically two flaps mm -hmm. held together by the eye that you hook them onto the mm -hmm. dredge and i was like and they talked about it and they talked about the color of it and whatever and they're like well quite often a bait they're just black mm -hmm. and then quite often the bait ball will look dark in yeah. the water and i was like oh okay i kind of get what they're saying and then they talked about the movement and mm -hmm. the vibration mm -hmm. and i was like oh okay sweet so i ordered some of those to clip on my dredge Got them, clipped them on. Never had a short corner bite ever. Mm. That first season I had nine. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. And I was like, you can't tell me it's a coincidence. Mm. Fished all the same spots. Yeah. Like, had other bites like mm -hmm. before that, but had never had one on the short yeah. corner in the first season I had nine. I was like, wow. Well, there you go. So that, and then if I look at the strip dredge, mm -hmm. That's what that creates. Yeah. You've got long moving mm -hmm. strips that are hitting each other, yeah. the vibration in the mm -hmm. water. Yeah. Like, it, and it's got the flash yeah. of what my ones have, but it's also got movement. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so th that's the sort of second um, part of the teasers that we're using. Mm. And it's, as I say, it's a totally different um, job. I'm not, um, I'm not so fussed on pulling that out of the water straight away. Mm. You know, I, I like it to keep fishing. And the reason I like to keep fishing with it is I just had so many multiples come off them. Oh, yeah. You know, like, say you raise a fish on the teaser, you pull the dredge out as well. Yeah, you might get multiples, but I mean, the amount of times that I've slowed the boat down and there's another fish in the dredge and you can um, manage to get that on too mm. is, is pretty high, mm. you know? So I, I sort of like, yeah, I like to keep it fishing, whereas opposed to the teasers where I, I get like, like to get them out straight away. Yeah. Well, I guess the, with the... With a teaser, it's like a singular target. Yeah. Where with a dredge, it's like a bait ball. They don't go in there like trying to pick something off it. They're smashing it yeah, with their they, bill. Yeah, they don't try to there. eat it so much either. Nah. You know, like they just they're just trying to smack it up it. to yeah. pull Whereas, something off the back of it to eat it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas uh, the, the the surface chain, <laughs> they're like they're they're actively trying to eat, eat that thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Today's one was yeah. trying. <laughs> but um yeah on that like on that teaser chain note like uh, i um i do like like i mean i always try to run a chain with the with the um and by a chain if, if whoever is listening is like yeah yeah. Mate, yeah it's either like a squids or um i know a good mate of mine eddie over at peak sport fishing is running like a a big uh, paddle tail on on like droppers so oh, he's got yeah. like four or five paddle tails with a lure behind it you know oh yeah and that yeah. he says that works pretty good but there's all sorts of ones that you can ones that you can make up but yeah just anything with like a, a like a, a chain of um yeah artificial Where it looks like a bigger fish chasing smaller correct. fish yeah, yeah. correct it, it is what we're using for a teaser i'm not normally using just a straight one like a single um, target yeah like I don't like that as a teaser myself I want the extra exactly what we just spoke about that extra um, big chasing small you mm. know so um, that's the that's sort of my choice on the on the teasers um, mm. for maybe for blue marlin I will pull really really big stuff single targets but they are massive yeah, you know the chocolate thunder, chocolate right? Chocolate thunder, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, like that's another story for the blue mullins. But yeah, yeah, I'll pull um two chocolate thunders, yeah, one each side. Yeah, yeah, but you, massive. yeah. But then that gets on to like what you're gonna pull it with, you know? Yeah, so. but then you see like a blue marlin and what there's that big one caught a couple of years ago and they gutted a like what was it an eighty kilo yellowfin tuna out of it? Yes, so something like the that. The chocolate thunder is oh. like the yellowfin tuna would eat that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's one thing that I've, I've noticed a lot in terms of talking like size and presentation is that heaps of people that aren't necessarily into marlin fishing or don't really know, they look and go, holy shit, that's big lure. And it's like the BTK. And it's like, mm. well, look at the size of it compared to what tries to eat it. It's yeah. tiny yeah, yeah. in comparison. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So just like a teaser, right? Like mm. people look at a teaser and go, holy shit, that's massive. Mm. Like 50 kilo stripe is going to try and eat that. Yeah. Because they would in the wild yeah. if it was there. Yeah. And the, the thing is too, like um, on the teaser, um, the size, I sort of want to try to be like, a bit bigger than what I can really have a good hookup rate with a lure, mm. you know. That's why those um, the squids in front make a like uh, a bigger presence too, you know. Yeah. Um, but the the one thing I don't really worry about how it runs that much. Like I don't care if it skips and all that kind of stuff because I'm not trying to hook it. Mm. And I actually want it to like actually bounce out of the water a bit because I want to be able to like I don't want something that's going to dig in hard when I pull it away. Oh yeah. You know, I want something that's going to pop out of the water and like I can rip it out. Quick. Get it faster. Yeah, because if it yeah. like digs in real hard, like <laughs> oh man, you, you just struggle to get it away fast <laughs> enough. You know, so that's why like I like running those angle face or the scallop face. That once you pop them, mm, they, they skip across they just the skip top. skip across the surface. You know. Ah. Yeah. So that's that's why we're running stuff like that, and you'll notice that they run very very differently to the our lures, which. Um, you'll see the teaser skipping a lot hmm. and you know how much I hate a skipping lure hmm. but Marlon love them Yeah, and that's why I don't care with the, uh, the teaser chain yeah because you're not trying to hook it not trying to hook it at all hmm. so that's what I was saying saying about the lures just being targets to carry hooks that we're trying to maximise our hmm. hook away. and especially like um, when we're striped Marlon fishing I'm running very small lures with the little light gauge in them uh, all there there is for strictly for hookup rate, the little lures, but I still like to have the big size in the spread and that's where the teasers come into their into their own by putting that size and presence in there and action. Yeah. You know? So yeah, so that's the that's the that's the teaser chains mm. and, and dredge sort of. Yeah, combo. we'll 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 stay on the um teaser chains a little bit more. So in terms of like setting a teaser chain up so mm. there's obviously i did a couple of videos that are on my instagram yeah. on how to set it up with the electric yeah. and a, with the rope yeah, manually yep really yeah. and then um but i want to talk about the length of the teaser chain okay so, yeah yeah it's so important. when you it's it, real important that like so w what you mean by the length of the chain is like not how far we're putting it out nah it's how yeah. far the actual chain is yeah how long the chain is. yeah long, the, long chain the chain is from the swivel to the to the Lula. like yes so where you connect it to your outrigger and the position you need it to hang so it's only just touching the water like the back of the skirt is only just touching the water mm. um if you have it too long and <laughs> and you cannot get it out of the water uh, the fish ain't gonna leave it alone. No, it's not gonna <laughs> leave it alone and that's the problem i mean i've had them there you pull the teaser up out of the water and the thing's still circling underneath your rigger mm. you know it can see the see the see the teaser up there it wants it bad yeah but if that was in the water it would have climbed climbed all over it mm. and that yeah that's the that's the biggest thing is like you must have your teaser when you pull it up to the rigger it must only just touch the water if not be out of the water mm. otherwise you you will never get the fish off the teaser no nah. well that that happened um with me last year when the one of joe's first fish that i caught out of raglan mm. that ate the long corner and then it mustn't have like felt the hooks and it came forward and tried to eat the teaser mm. after well he came up behind the teaser um he was all lit up and he was gonna eat it and i ripped the teaser out of the water and then he sort of came after it but then he felt obviously something's not mm. right here so he peeled off and i was like because we didn't realize what we'd hooked because i didn't see the bite so I thought oh it's weird it's like it's swimming with us because i was winding the line just in the rod holder and i was like oh it's like must be an albacore or something and then yeah then seen it light up behind the teaser and he was after the teaser and when i pulled it out the fish pissed off and then it came back and it was circling mm. the teaser hanging in the rigger while yeah. i was clearing the gear yeah 
And Joe's standing there whining, going, oh, fuck, that's beautiful. Yeah. Look how beautiful he is. Yeah. I look over the side of the boat, and the fucking marlin's underneath, like, circling the teaser hanging out of the rigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had a hook in him. Why? Well, yeah. he had the lure on him. Yeah. I don't know. He mustn't have been hooked yet. But yeah. ended up hooking during yeah. the fight. That's what I said, though. They can see it, man. Yeah, and they if, want it. Yeah, yeah. And they're not good at getting out of the water to get them. So yeah. this is why you want it out of the water. Well, today's know? one would have. Yeah, like, yeah. Came right out of the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, so that's really important to have that length is crucial because, yeah, as I say, if you have it and it stops and the thing's still in the water, it, it, you aren't going to get that. It's going to get fixated on that and you aren't going to get the, the switch back onto the, mm. onto the... The thing the thing is you really, as I mentioned before, you really don't want them to get your teaser. Mm. I mean, you can't stop them there. You know, you can't beat them, but... Um, if you can, you can. Yeah. You know, if you can, you want it. Yeah. You know. So. Mm. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the important thing on the length is yep. to do that. And then in terms of your spread, so we so we talked about the length of the chain and where we mm. want it. We've talked. Well, you've talked about we want in terms of how long the teaser should be, mm. so that when you clear it, it's out of the water. So that's the main point, right? Yeah. Then you talked about the presentation when it's in the water. You mm. want it to be. And that sort of traditional, well, where were they on wave your boat two. today? Yeah, wave two. Wave two, yeah, which yep. is traditionally short corner. Yeah, yeah. Still a lot of white water in that there though, yep. you know? Is that also a good thing though for the teaser if you don't want to eat it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because then they don't get a clear target on it either. That's the whole point. This yep. is what we're trying to, this is the whole point of it, man. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want them to be good at eating it. Nah, you just want them to get pissed off yep. trying to eat it. Exactly. And and get then, that aggressive bite yeah that going away bite man yeah which you saw oh yeah i saw it all right today you know yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go yeah yeah so that um so yeah we talked about the length of the chain we talked about the presentation of it um in terms of your spread so mm. if you're standing at the back of the boat you're looking at your spread and then you've got your um i i guess your you stagger because your corners are slightly yeah. in and your riggers are out do you want your teasers inside your corners? Yes. In terms of width? Yeah, you yeah. want to create that V yeah. going out. You know, like, yeah. say, as you look from the transom out, your lures are getting wider as they get further back. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So it's, it's, how did, like, a, a rough kind of gauge how far inside? Oh. Doesn't, I just needs to a, be inside? Yeah, but it... it like you're going to have your dredge off of dredge boom so that's going to be a set distance mm. you know then you're going to have you want your you want your teaser chain outside your dredge um and then your lures obviously outside those again mm. so it depends how long your rigger is really yeah you know like i, I mean that's a bit of a hard one for me yeah. to answer and yeah like but we just want that v you like, want to create yeah. that v yeah. yeah do you want it as like okay so if we're talking that so you want to create that v so if you go from your riggers being obviously they're going to be right out the widest they're yes. going to be the widest do you want them to then be as wide as they possibly can um as it, as you come in yeah it depends though depends, like it depends yeah. on what your weather is and all that yeah. kind of stuff i mean well you want it to be in the water right yeah so if you get too wide you've got too much angle yeah you got too get, much height yeah, yeah. so y yes you do want to have as much width and height as you possibly can without With, coming out of the water yeah that's a that's yeah. probably the best way to explain it yeah that's yeah. your lure part yeah and then your teaser would just be inside those just be inside those yeah 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 i suppose because if you get that fish on he's going back you want him to be able to see it mm -hmm. when he comes back past it, right? Yeah. And if you're in, if you're, say, outside it, or like directly in line with it, well, when he falls back, it's going to come straight. You got to think head. about it. It's got to be wider because it's always in the clear. Like if you had mm. it inside, it'd be it'd be back into the white water again. Yeah. You Makes know. Sense. Yeah. So that's like, I don't know. I'm just. I mean, all of these are just theories, man. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know, I never spoken to one. <laughs> you know, but like it's just over time of what you watch, what how you see the fish react. And I I'm a big like I always watch what what the fish is doing and then try to think about okay, why did it do that? On how do they act on different boats and all sorts of stuff like that. Mm. But that that little thing about the clear water, I'm sort of definitely interested mm. in having really clear windows for my lures which i never really paid attention to before 
but then you know you get older and you see more stuff and your knowledge pool grows mm. you're like okay maybe there's something to that you know and not necessarily what we're talking about now but just in general mm. you know as your knowledge pool grows you're like oh yeah oh, that's why that was happening maybe you know mm. so none of the stuff that you actually confirm yeah but you're like oh yeah you've probably got a bit of a handle on it now eh? you know yeah. yeah well a lot of um like i even find it with my own fishing a lot of what goes on is like gut feel yeah it's huge you know like you're there and you're like or like for whatever reason or whatever it is like you know what lure you put out all of that it's like a gut feeling right and the, and yeah. you go back to what you know like the amount of people that yeah. will run like we spoke to a guy last yeah. night that talked about his runs the same four lures yep. and his fifth lure he leaves up to his mates that they can pick but he picks those four because he's caught fish on those yeah. four it's it's a mental game yeah it's so confidence. it's like yeah you know it's like anything you do it's confidence yeah you know but that gut feeling is massive man like mm. it's like today i don't know if there's a blue marlin there but i'm like this is where they are if there's blue marlin in the bay and they're out of the cape this is where they this is where you find them man mm. and it's not like it's just an area, yeah. There's there, and there was bait and there was there's structure there, and you're like, I'm just gonna mow it here. And and the biggest thing you would have noticed, man, today, is that we ran very different lines to any other boat. Mm. You, you you I I don't understand. Like I'm fishing and all I'm doing is going across the current. Like it makes sense to me that the fish are gonna be moving one way or the other with that current, like they're not going to be moving like and if i'm intersecting a wider pattern this is what i'm saying i don't you know if i'm going down that same way as the current i'm only only fishing as wide as you spread yeah exactly little window yeah so um uh that i think is um you know that plays a big part in it Mm. too you know there's another podcast topic we're just coming up with heaps here yeah, this is the problem when you try to pick this one on this <laughs> teasers, man. Like, it's actually quite a difficult... Yeah. You know? Yeah, but it's all relatable, right? Like, yeah, totally. you know, it all relates back to what we're talking about. And, yeah. like, and obviously we plan it's, to do this podcast. It's huge. Like, the teasers, once you get it set up, so effective mm. that, I mean... On this boat here is not as crazy as the, my old boat, the, the Spellbound. But um, that boat, I don't even watch the lures, man. <laughs> like the amount of fish that we came on the teaser was just as crazy. It was like 75, 80% of the fish came on the teaser chain first. Yeah. Very rarely did we get a bite on the rigger. It was on the teaser chain, drop back and eat the corner. Like, that's just what happened. It was just it was yeah. crazy, you know? So, yeah, they're a very integral part of, um, of the fishing. Uh, the one thing I will say is, like, um, as far as uh, the person running the teasers, they need to watch them because um, the fish are going to come directly t- to you, you know? Uh, so if you don't want to worry about watching your gear and just look forward and drive, don't really fish with the teasers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know? you'll turn around and they'll be gone yeah yeah and it happens fast <laughs> yeah it does yeah well we got a good story about that in the Kubota last year yeah 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 i told i was I, that was that was an interesting one eh? like, mm. pretty green crew yeah um a boat that you couldn't see the cockpit and everyone's like oh let's put the teaser out. i'm like no you're not i'm not putting the teaser out man like and they're like why not i says because you guys aren't gonna watch it oh no we'll, be, we'll definitely watch it bonds i'm like you know, you're not gonna watch it. Oh, come on, let's put it out. And I'm like, oh, against my better judgment, out they put it. Sure enough, like 10 minutes. It's all marlin all over the teaser. Teaser rods doubled over. I can't see what's going on. Next yeah. minute I hear like screaming and that. I'm like, well, pull it in, like, oh, you know? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was you there to save the day, mate. Yeah, well like that, um, but there's it there again, right? Like we were running that same yeah. Line all day. Yeah. As soon as you put we might have run that fish over. Yeah. And he didn't like what he saw. And that teaser went out. He presentation. Yeah. It's extremely important. Yeah. The presentation and getting fish up in yeah. your spread. Yeah. And, and and I I harp on about this. If you are not getting them up and into your spread on the like pretty much on the surface, you aren't going to get a bite out of them there. No. 
like it, 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 and it blows me away, you know, like guys like Arch Toma Fallers, yes, you do catch fish, there's no doubt about it. And uh, I mean, there's going to be some very good people around the world that argue about this, but Blue Marlins, not so much, I don't think, but um, with your stripers and, and that kind of thing, your, your, your teasers and getting the fish up is huge, huge part, mm. you know? Well, you'd like, Tell me a trailer boat in New Zealand that's consistent and successful that doesn't tow a dredge in a teaser chain. Like I don't, I don't think I or none, no one that I know that does consistently well. I don't know. Doesn't have a teaser chain in a dredge. No. Or at least one of well, at least a dredge. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. Not so important, I don't think, with the big boats compared to mm. the trailer boat. Yeah, you know. Well, that tra- what the trailer boat eh, it just creates that presentation. Yeah. Right, like you know, bigger footprint in the water, mm-hmm. more going on. It's like, yeah. Oh shit! That's, I like the look of what's yeah, happening more, there. More consistent pace. Yeah. Like more consistent wake. Yeah. You know, mm. not dictated by sea conditions so much. All of those kind of things. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just saw it like with those sonar boats, and then watching, as I said, what we had come through the factory and boat set up and that presentation is a massive part of it mm. you know yeah well back to that when we put that teaser out that day because even that process to what happened there because i'm just trying to remember what lures we had in the corners but i'd swapped one out didn't i so i put the teaser in and then i put the trojan in mm. the corner behind it yeah because i was like what's going to happen is a stripe is going to come up on that and if we well i think we had a big okay was it the ballistic, ballistic maybe yeah, yeah and behind it yeah which is what the one ate today but um yeah i was like oh, i'll put the trojan in there it'll hold him better yeah. bit easier target when he falls back and away and it like yeah 10 minutes later because mm-hmm. i went down and got you a drink eh, yeah, from downstairs yeah. and i walked upstairs to get bonds a drink and then I like passed in the water and I turned around to give Brad one and Brad was sitting out the back on the, the boat that we're in there to like viewing platforms, a big bloody gin palace, eh? yeah. 70 footer, um, Jimmy's boat, Jimmy Buffett. And um, Brad was sitting out the back and I just saw him jump up and I knew the body language just yeah. from watching. He didn't need to say shit. I knew exactly what. So I threw the other water bottle on the ground and ran downstairs and I remember just stepping out onto the, onto the deck and I looked up, because where he looked to me looked like he was looking back on a rigger. Mm. I was like, okay, the fish is, you know, like it's it's going to be on the rigger. And I stepped down, I remember I just looked up and just see this marlin mouth open right behind the teaser, bang, just yeah. grabs it. I was like, shit. And I looked to the side and my teaser rod was like folded over on itself and just peeling line out. And then he managed to get it off him, tease it up. And then he just dropped straight back on the corner, mm. <laughs> ate it. Yeah. It was mean. It was me. <laughs> yeah. But we're lucky because like, we let him have it. Yeah, like, too yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like as I said, you can't stop them. Nah. You know? Mm. So We could have done a better job, though. A lot better. <laughs> but, oh, man, this is what it is, you know? Mm. Yeah. People don't know. It's Green Crew. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, but that 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 is... Uh, I sound like a stuck record, but mm. yeah, that's the whole, like, whole thing of these teasers is exactly that presentation, giving more commotion, giving other dimensions to your spread, and all you're trying to do is create reaction. Mm. Okay, now let's talk about the, um, let's talk about the process of like setting the boat to run the gear. Okay. So there's obviously... So it starts with your riggers, really, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it like, does. So if we did the riggers first, the riggers first is important that you have a good set of riggers. Like, if I was going to encourage anyone to spend any money on their boat, would be like, in your setting up, is instead of buying lots of rods and reels and stuff like that, you can get away with a couple to start with, is spend your money on a good set of riggers. And by that, I don't mean you need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. There's some very good, uh, like, telescopic riggers around now, which, when locked out and set up correctly, um, for, like, anywhere between 1000 and 
1500 1600 bucks you can get an extremely good set of outriggers that are stiff mm. and as i say set up correctly work very very well yeah you know and then obviously you can start to go and spend you know it's endless what you can spend on the set of riggers but you want stiff um a good angle and length yeah length is important like yeah like uh on a trailer boat, for example, you, you want to go as long as you can, as you can really, and transport. Mm. Transport's a big thing. That's yeah. pretty much what dictates how long you can go. Yeah. But yeah, you definitely want the length. Yeah. You know. So if you're thinking like a, I don't know, six six and a half meter plus boat, twenty footers. Yeah, if you yeah. can travel with yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so my boat here, this eighteen. You got eighteen yeah. footers on this one. Yeah. yeah. And your standard pole length, your minimum that you want to go with, which is at, uh, like your standard, is sixteen feet. Yeah. So that's really the fifteen to sixteen feet is the minimum yeah. you want, regardless. Like even your boat minimum would be. Yeah, mine is fifteen foot six. Yeah, that's mm. the minimum yeah. really you want. Mm. You know um because the thing is you need that height and you need the width mm. to get that and like a lot of the old riggers were like the fiberglass ones and they're very flexy and they're rigged badly um and just don't present well at all mm. you know so that would be my first thing that i'd um concentrate on is getting a good set of riggers uh getting them well set up and this, like as I say, you've got some good videos on on that on your um, Instagram page, mm. how you got your setup, and people can just copy that, you know, and they can then change it to however big of a boat, like the the setup's still the same. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, that's the first bit of the of the puzzle for the teasers is the outrigger, and then running the actual teaser off the pole, you've got two ways of doing it um you've got uh your hand line which you started with and all that all that entails is um as far as the rigging goes of the outrigger you have your double halyards which is like all four lures that you're towing in the riggers then you're going to have your teaser chain connected to your rigger pole and um it's got through a hand line, it's got a pulley that stays on your hand line the, f the whole time. And then you have like, uh, we just um, create a loop with a bit of 400 pound on your um, outrigger and that's your fixed point. And that's normally just below um, where your first outrigger halyard would run. Mm. Right, so if- So it sits just down inside yeah, so your just corner. Just down inside your corner. So you would create a fixed point there and from there, we would have an 80 pound piece of mono that clips in there to the swivel pulley, which is connected to your, which is what the rope runs, rope through. runs through. Yeah. So the reason for that is if you get a fish on one, you can still, oh, if you get a fish on one, you can still pull it away from the fish with the hand line and it hangs in the rigger. So that's, that's the main thing. But the reason why you put the breakaway in is so if the fish comes and grabs your teaser it actually just snaps it off that it snaps the 80 pound and breaks it off the rigger it doesn't break your rigger mm. and if you have that tied straight to the 400 pound with the rope through the pulley it's going to be all bad news mm. you're going to be buying another outrigger <laughs> yeah. yeah well in my boat they probably tip it over yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so um yeah so that that teaser chat is important and then you've got the second style is uh, with the electric reels that we talk about, mm. but this is where it's really important. I ask little guys ask me a lot. Oh, I need to triple rig them so the um, hand line goes through the ring. I'm like, you do not want to do that at all, because it is like with the teaser chain off a hand line, you do not want the third halyard with the ring. And I'll talk about what I'm, I'll talk about the third halyard with the ring in a second, but. You do not want any uh, rope or anything going through the um, through the the extra halyard because when you when it breaks off the rigger, you want it just to break off and go like be clear, so it doesn't mm. go through any lines. Because if it is connected through your rigger and it goes through an extra halyard, it's going to ripple your halyards off as well. Mm. 
you know yeah we'll break it off the off the pole but since that rope's going th- actually through a ring on your third halyard <laughs> it's going to rip that off as well so you could potentially rip your rigger off again there mm. so um going to that about running the um the the teasers off the electric wheels which is obviously my pre- preferred option because it's fast mm. um nothing wrong with the hand line well obviously. the best thing is it's so good for clearing the gear yeah like, like i mean but we can talk about that yeah. in a bit so uh the setup with the electric reel and like we can get into what kind of ones that we use but um just at the moment it doesn't have to be electric reel either too by the way mm. uh, it can just be a teaser reel i, I as i said I, I still prefer the electric reel because it's so easy mm. um but it could be like you know any any kind of reel that you've got with a drag and the important thing is got to have a drag um there is like uh oh, well, i'll talk about the reels a bit but there is one reel I, I will tell you that i won't recommend um and it's not a brand or anything it's just a style um but uh as far as running it running it running your teaser out of the rigger off a reel the first of all is that you have that fixed point that we just talked about um on the on the pot on the on the pole just below your corner yep same thing on the um on the with running it for the next reel. but what we do is put a third halyard in uh onto your rigger so you're running three halyards not two now and that third halyard has a ring in it and your um you, instead of having a breakaway where your uh your teaser like pulley can crack off yeah it can crack yeah. off we have a fixed point now so that it's like 400 piece of 400 pound or an eye or so connect your 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 pulley to that and since you have drag on your reel um you uh you don't have that thing of uh, breaking off mm. because the official grabber and the reel let the drag out mm. you know um, but that goes through that third halyard. It's got the stainless steel ring. It goes through that. And what that what that is there for is so you can get the teaser back and adjust the height or pull it in the boat or that. But um, yeah, as opposed to the uh, the the one on the hand line, if you had that through, the, if you had the hand line through that ring, as I say, it would snap off the rigger and go <laughs> through your halyards. Whereas with the electric reel or the, with the reel, it's got drag and you need that fixed point. You do not want it to break off the rigger. No. And then when you pull it up, the rig, the, the uh, teaser's hanging in the right height. Yeah. So, I mean, this is all, I mean, I started off doing exactly what I just told you not to do. Mm. And I learned the hard way. It's a disaster. Next minute, I've got no halyards left on my outrigger. You know, like burns yeah. the whole lot off. <laughs> disaster. Yeah. Just because I didn't know. Yeah. You know, and that's how you learn. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that was that's 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 the sort of rigor setup, and it's hard to explain. I mean, it's hard to visualize on yeah. a podcast. Yeah, but um, it's important to talk about yeah. the importance of so, it. And some people will, are yeah. good at visualizing, so they'll see. Yeah. It. So, um, as far as the like the actual like medium to pull these things, so obviously a rope, just using like a four or five mil cord that's nice on your hands. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well. I mean, <laughs> white black brown that, that's but, yeah, a funny story yeah. that yeah. i'll just tell that that one quickly so when i set my boat up i obviously had seen you know boats and that they had teasers and they all had black cord so yeah. then we bonds was like well, this is what you want to do put, put a piece of 400 pound round clip your pulley on piece of 80 pound breakaway on there so if the fish grabs it can snap off and then you know just run some cord i was like sweet so i went to hammer hardware up in I was in Monganui, I think, in Cable Bay. And then I went in there, they didn't have any black cord, they only had white. And I text Bonds, oh, is white cord all good or does it have to be black? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's... that's it a... didn't, clearly didn't matter because they only had white. And you're like, don't worry, white's fine. Yeah. yeah. But that's just me messing with people's heads, man. Yeah, Because like, yeah. fishermen are so easy to mess with mentally. Yeah. Like, it's so good. <laughs> you know, like... And, and it's, it's like this whole thing is in your head, mm. you know, this whole game that we're doing is in your head. So yeah, of course I'm going to mess with it. Yeah. Well, it's even the same, right? I remember when we first set my riggers up, didn't have any black mono. Yeah. So I did it with clear and I was just like, oh man, going to be no good. Clear mono and white rope. You're going to be shit. And then, yeah, caught nine in the first season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. So. <laughs> and I'd caught two in what five years before that, or yeah. four years, or whatever it was. Yeah, 
So, but yeah, so that's the the hand line. You just want something like easy to like pull. Mm. Um, so on your reel, I'm running like myself. I'm running one fifty pound because I really want it to like one. I like one. I want it to be able to still be strong enough to to give it a good pull. And of course, you still got the drag. But I also want it, if it all goes pear shaped, I want it to break. Yeah. Yeah, I know I lose my teaser, but I still got my outrigger. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so uh, teaser's a lot cheaper to replace than an outrigger. Yeah. You know, so yeah, running one fifty on that, and the other thing with that is that it's one fifty trace. It's like one point three mil, or one point four mil. It's actually good, like good to pull on your hands if you have to. I, yeah. I try not to do the hand teasing. Yeah. That's a whole another ball game. Um, a lot of guys do it, but on the trailer boat. A lot of guys in the big boat do it. They'll, mm. they'll pull the teaser in by hand because it's fast. But on the trailer boat, it's such a short tease that, um, and we haven't got much room. I don't want all that line lying around in uh, <laughs> in, in the in the boat. It'll tangle on something real easy, and it's, it'll be a disaster, you know. So mm. I, I just push the button and yeah. hope for the best. Yeah. But um, yeah, so. That's that's what I've got the reels all spooled with, and you want the spool. Full. How much drag you have on it? Ah, uh, I have as much drag as I can, like as like I can pull it off. Like it's hard for me to pull it off. Oh yeah. Yeah, like it's not like yeah, it's not it's not just enough drag to pull. Put it this way, it's not just enough drag to pull the teaser. I want it like I have to actually really pull it to pull it off. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've got it pretty tight. Yeah. On the reels I've got, I've got it like pretty much locked up. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they don't have much drag. Oh yeah. I think they're I think they're maxed out at like sixteen kilos. Oh okay. So it's not heaps. Yeah. It's no. I mean, you know, I probably I probably realistically got twelve kilos on them, like I would at strike on a yeah on a, on a you know heavy tackle lure, you know. Yeah. So not huge drag. Mm. Um. Yeah, because I was quite surprised at how um you know like you think eighty pound out of the rigger. You think like oh, wow, that's like eighty pounds. It's thirty seven kilos yeah. to break that. Yeah. Fuck, they snap it like that. Yeah, but it's the but, shock. Yeah, yeah. It's the shock, man. Yeah, it's funny, it's eh? Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. Even like with you know your clips and that, and having them at five kilos, but mm. they pop out of that like nothing. Like yeah, easy. Be, but when you try and pull it out, you're like, like oh man, mm. shit. But you got to remember, you're doing what seven, eight knots. There's the weight of the lure, which mm -hmm. is probably already sitting the clip at two, three kilos. It's only another two kilos, bang, and yeah. it's out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. So, um, Yeah, yeah, because that, well, I suppose some listeners are probably thinking, wow, 80 pounds, like, that's strong. Like, wouldn't you do it with 15 or... No, nah, you can But you it. actually want to be able to... You want to be able to... You want grab enough it if there. Yeah, that, yeah, if it grabs it still, you can... Pull it off Pull them. it off them. Yeah, because yeah. that's the thing is you, you don't, like... How do I say this? Like, you know, you go back to seeing you had a lot of fish fade off your teaser. Mm. Majority of those were when you had the uh, hand line, right? Mm. Yeah. So it knocks it out and then that thing just lulls in the water because it's dull. Like, it's, yeah. so you think about that, like, oh, it's just coming hot and it's knocked it down. I'm like, yeah, yeah, mean, it's knocked it down and it's all fired up. And then it, you've, it's knocked it down. It just goes dead in the water and sinks back. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's killed that whole reaction yeah that instinct in the fish yeah yeah you see what i mean like yeah yeah so maybe that's part of why mm. you didn't get many bites off your teaser yeah you know i don't know i mean yeah. i'm just theorizing but um that is exactly what happens is and that's why i personally like having them off the um the reel yeah so that doesn't happen yeah yeah because even if they grab it you're going to rip it off them fast and then it's yeah, that instincts got, back again. Yeah, it's, like, it's got action. Like yeah. as soon as you break it off the rigger, it's it's lost all its action. Mm. So not that I mean, yeah, it's a compromise. Yeah. But it's I mean it's a lot cheaper to do it that way, and yeah. yes, it's going to work probably ninety percent of the time. Mm. But that is the, is a is a difference with having it in a, on a reel. Mm. You know? Yeah, well, hands on the deck too, right? Yeah. Like, so another factor for me going electric is the fact that my boat's only small. So mm -hmm. normally I'm only fishing with two guys. You get a fish on, you got four lures, a 
teaser and the dredge out. You got a lot of gear going. Yeah. On. So you've got like, and then the angler's got to get to the rod. Yeah. So literally their job, because they they normally just sit in the passenger seat, or if you're mm-hmm. Joe Murray, you lie asleep on the floor. Yeah. All yeah. day. Yeah. But he he's good. Yeah. Yeah, he gets yeah. his bites when he sleeps. Yeah. Only problem is you can't <laughs> let him touch the teaser reel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just break it. Yeah. Well, that was his one job. Is yeah. the, so that's what I tell my anglers. Like their job is the fish comes in yeah. and it eats. Yeah. Your job is to put the gimbal, I press the button on the dredge reel, yeah. like just press the button and put the gimbal on. Yeah. And then by the time they're generally done that, yeah. then I've cleared whatever rod is on the side that the fish ate. Yeah. So then we've got one side of the boat free. Yeah, it's fast, yeah. man. And then I just press the button, yeah. as soon as the fish comes up, press the button yeah. on my um, teaser reel, which yeah. is right beside me, just push that. Yeah. Both of those are out. And yeah. then now I've only got to get three rods out of the water. Yeah. But before when I had the ropes, the person on the rod would have to pull the dredge in, yeah, which I had double purchased, yeah. so it's like 40 metres of rope, yeah. hand over hand, yeah. it takes a while. Yeah. Yeah. Lock, if we had that blue marlin on today, oh. like, mate, mate, but yeah. I had to get after it with the dredge out, yeah. like, wouldn't have been able to, Yeah, like it would have taken way too long. The thing is too, like, and it's just today's conditions were not conducive to, yeah. both, you know, yeah. but... But yeah. if you had four, five people on the boat, oh, you can do that. Yeah, exactly. You got two guys, this is your yeah. job. Fish comes up, rip that in, rip that in. You start yeah. clearing gear, I clear gear, you pick up the rod. Yeah. And you're sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. With two people, yeah. you need the, the electric is a massive help. Yeah. So, on that note, there's quite a few options mm. for that now, which is really good. Um, I mean, I don't know if I should mention brands or what, mm. but like I, I've got I've got Daiwas on one boat, and I really like them. I've got the Tanacoms, um, and they actually I had the uh, drags upgraded on those. I put a, a Carvatex drag in it, and man, that thing can pull. I really like it. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's the only thing w- with them is they quite often like all the electric reels have an auto stop on them. Oh yeah. And um, you uh, have to be on to it because it'll leave the teaser in the water. Yeah. So you. you gotta, oh, you can re- you can take yeah. that out. That shows you how much technical knowledge I yeah. have made, eh? You know. I've taken it out on mine. Yeah. So. You can because uh, it normally stops at I think six meters. Yeah. And then again. Yeah. At one or whatever, but I think yeah, I did it when I got mine. I went through the manual. Oh no, I saw it on a video on YouTube. Oh yeah. Yeah. So oh. maybe I'll share that link. Yeah, on, that'd be cool if you yeah, did because I, I didn't know you could podcast. do that. With this podcast, yeah, and you can turn it off yeah. so that it will just go back to zero. Yeah, that's yep. that's really good if yep. you can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then I uh, also have one called a Banex, which is a very cheap one, um, and I actually really like it because it's got a high speed um, button on it. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I just push the high speed button. It has no stop on it either, which I really like. So it just yeah. slams it into the rig and I have a, a, a bead there that yeah. hits. So like I get a fish up, I just push the high speed button, it rips it in. Downfall of those is they don't have very much drag, oh, yeah. but they got enough for what we do. The teasers that I pull here yeah. um, have been smoked on it a couple of times and yeah, durability, we'll see if it lasts. Yeah. You know? But um, yeah, but the, 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 the dial has been real good. And then um, uh, I also have uh, a Seaborg oh, as yeah. well. That yeah. thing's an animal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's like it's like everything. You get what you pay for. Yeah. You know, so yeah, so those, any of those electric reels, um, make sure they're full mm. of line because you want them to like... To, and um, the other thing is too, I, guys, I get asked a lot, is can I use it for poker fishing as well, the same reel? Yeah, you can, but don't put the braid on your teaser because if you ne- you never want to grab it. Mm. Like if you have to grab it, you you, you never grab the, the, the braid. Like it'll just <laughs> Cut tear your, your fingers apart. off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. And then the last reel, which I really don't like, is the um, pancake reel that's getting um, a lot of guys that are starting to use. Oh, and yeah. not is that, that just like yeah, a... Yeah, it's yep. got like a... It looks like a flat thing with a handle in it, and they don't... Act, like, they've got a drag system in it, but the whole spool moves around and the handle moves around. Oh. Oh, man, it's a killer. Like a fly reel. Yeah, like like, a it's like, exactly fly like reel. a fly reel. Yeah, yeah. so imagine do you get that one today that smokes you on the teaser, and you try to get in there to, to, to pull it in, and that thing drills you. It's like, oh, I'm waiting for somebody to lose a hand on the teaser reel, you know? Yeah, like, break your knuckles. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the one I don't recommend, eh? Yeah. You know? 
um, you're better off to uh, save up your money mm. and, and get like a, 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 a better system than that. Like, and uh, if it's electrical, it's manual. Just um, that. But it's manual. Go to a rope. Go, to, yeah. Or, or else, uh, like a like a Tiagra or oh, something yeah, like just that. Something you know? like that. Yeah, you can just yeah. wind it. But um, yeah, so that would be the the reels on that, and then that's for your surface chains your teaser chains or your, te- your teasers then and your dredges this is where it starts to get really um how would i say it starts to cost money <laughs> yeah so mm. it starts anywhere out from a thousand dollars to run your dredge off electric reel through to ten thousand dollars through to more mm. um so at the the top end and this is where like used to see it a lot like i mean most boats in a, in the states got two lp reels that's the industry standard sp 1200 it's a beast of a reel um that's your standard dredge reel but i mean in new zealand that's ten thousand dollars a piece it's a lot of money <laughs> but if you want to be able to pull big dredges off your outriggers and stuff like that uh, that's the kind of setup you're gonna have to th- th- spend like so just to put it into perspective average like average boat setup that i do complete with teaser reels and like lp reels and everything, you're looking at around the thirty thousand dollar mark by the time yep. it's all done it's a lot of money yeah and you know guys ask oh, i want to run all this stuff like yeah and i tell them oh it's going to be thirty thousand dollars they're like that's ridiculous i was like that's how much it costs mate mm. like you know it's just yeah. it's, 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 <laughs> well real's ten thousand dollars a pop could, yeah so. if we could do it cheaper we'd do it but then that's that's for the ultimate setup is that kind of thing then we take it down a, a step and we do uh like the high end um uh, electric wheels in the smaller sizes like the seaborg for example that's i think that's nearly a three thousand dollar or just under two and a half thousand dollar um electric wheel but it's amazing it, mm. it pulls it can pull a lot so put that in with a carbon dredge boom um adjustable dredge boom and you're looking around about the five thousand dollar mark for a dredge setup um and then you start to go down from there you've got the i tell the other one it's very good is a is the shimano beastmaster that thing pulls really hard oh yeah yeah that's another good one um but the reason i say that is because guys are wanting to run big dredges Mm. those are the they'll handle bigger dredges like you're asking a lot out of these little reels Mm. so the next step down from that which you can only really run um uh strip dredges and dredges that don't pull hard like very low drag dredges low weight dredges is your like tanacom range um and they all need to be like double purchased like setups um it's hard to explain on a podcast what, yeah, yeah. what that is um but you'll see it on your videos how you've got it set up but you can't expect to do like people have to be realistic what these setups can do they can pull little dredges they cannot pull big dredges like what the lps and what a seaborg and that can pull mm. you know so basically the more money you spend the bigger and more sophisticated dredges you can pull Mm. you know but for new zealand the average trailer boat that tanacom with a strip dredge is extremely effective yeah with the carbon yeah um, and the carbon boom is an extremely price efficient yeah so So what would that there'd be like two grand two grand total eh? yeah two grand total yeah maybe not quite that you know yeah. it depends you get like anywhere from you probably ought to do it eighteen hundred dollars yeah um as far and then as you have a little bit of rigging like some line and yeah get, yeah but i mean the rigging the on this for the trailer boat you can go with um just like 400 pound mono yeah for the bigger boats i'd be going with the 400 pound braid because you want capacity Hmm. um with so the you can tr- get it further back yeah because you're yeah. gonna naturally your weight's gonna be further back so you want to go with like a 400 pound braid um the the, the trailer boat not so much because you're only having it out behind the boat like 20 meters you mm. know like in total so you've, uh, like i think i think one of those reels takes like 
maybe 50 or 60 meters of um, 400 pound mm. mono. So you can get away with that. You can't do that on a on the big boat. You you need to braid on that. Mm. So um, as far as there, the spooling you spool it with braid there, and as it's different because like with this with the dredge, you're not you're not pulling it by hand or anything. You know you don't have to worry about the braid being on your reel. Mm. You know. And you, you, you want the less drag, the better. Yeah. So that's like your dredge set up as um, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Yeah. And the strip dredges are like extremely um, successful like mm. for our fishery here. Well, so if you think about, you know, like even if you're not quite sure and you want to get into it, like that, that's the route you go down yeah because you can use it for everything mm. you can use it for kingy fishing yeah. live baiting you can use it for live baiting for marlin it's got it, it use it for everything you know the thing is with dredges like every one of them has got a pro and a con mm. you know some have got like what you talk about um like a strip dredge has got movement flash all that kind of stuff but it hasn't got durability mm. it, it wears out you know yeah, especially if the fish get hold of it. Yeah, you know, so you've got that as a con. Then you've got stuff like what you talked about with the plastic baits that are very, very versatile, but you haven't got any movement in yeah, it. Yeah, real durable. Yeah, but... real durable, but do they give you that vibration? Do they give you that flash? I don't know. Mm. You know, so you've got that. Then you've got, like, obviously, um, the wear on your bar. The dredge bar itself, the strip dredge, and all those kind of ones that don't have much drag, your bar lasts a long time. Mm. Start to put heavier stuff on, like I say, a shad with a paddle tail and that. There's a lot of pull on your bar, mm. so the bar doesn't last as long. And that's the whole thing is there's like, a, a dredge is a, not a maintenance-free item. Mm. Like guys go, oh man, I've had this for two years and it's worn out. I'm like, yeah, well, geez, you've done pretty well on it. <laughs> you know, like, they, they, they do take maintenance. You know, I mean, I've mentioned it in the past, but the, one of the guys that I work for, the importance of the dredge and how much money he spent on it, he spent like four, five hundred dollars a day US on a dredge, <laughs> plus a mate. Yeah. You know, so a, a dredge. They uh, rig baits into rig their baits, dredge. Yeah, eh? yeah. Yeah, it's another level. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, it's highly effective, mm. but unless you're committed to doing that, it's a lot of time. Mm. And most people, uh, especially how well, we fish here, <laughs> it's not an option, you know? <laughs> no. But I don't feel undergunned by running artificial. No. In any form. You know? Like the, I like all the artificial squid, anything. Just, yeah. just, but I do, I do like a dredge that's all one of the same thing. Mm don't like a dredge that's half one thing half another thing and that personally but that's just me it doesn't mm. mean it's not, not a marlin yeah well but yeah. i just think we've never been to a bait ball and there's like you know there's a squid there's a little mud flip tuna there's a <laughs> you know like oh, i mean maybe there is i don't know yeah <laughs> normally to walk up to a meatball it's all one thing yeah. with the with the with the tunas eating it you know yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, so that's your that's your dredge set up there. Mm. Um, I mean, you start to get into like with that dredge, you get into the weight that you need, uh, how far back you can pull it. Like it's quite a it's quite a um, fine line of like what how you like what you're gonna need to pull it. Like guys go, oh, what weight do I need for this? I'm like, I know pretty well now what what you need because I've done it for so long. Like a guy comes in. I want to get a strip dredge with a boom and a rope to pull it. Okay, I know you're going to need an eight pound weight for that. Mm. Um, but I know that if you pull that on a electric reel with a with a mono or um, braid on it, I know we can go back down to six pound mm. uh, weight because you're not going to need as much weight to overcome the drag of the rope. Yeah, to pull it down. To pull it down. Yeah. You know, so there's all these little factors. Um, that go into it but yeah you need enough weight on it to keep it under the surface you never want it breaking the surface yeah you know so yeah that's sort of your that's that's all the gear you and costs and that for you um, yeah 
so yeah you can do everything like on your dredge as well you don't need to have a you don't obviously don't need to have a um electric reel yeah you can have a, a dredge so if you went boat. down the rope factor what would that cost you no oh, looking at a boom like 450 bucks and then a dredge, strip dredge strip dredge but so about a thousand dollars for a dredge and a boom set up with a rope yep roughly give or take a hundred yep each side yep. on and then choose. to go to uh electric with the tanacom you'd be looking like double at, that yes easily yep so you'd be oh, a little at, bit more you'd be three times that wouldn't you yeah well oh, you, no you no? wouldn't be two and a half times yeah because you'd be two thousand for the uh basically eighteen hundred to two thousand for the reel and boom plus your dredge which would yep. be another six hundred so yeah two and a half thousand for that yeah so yeah it's it's double yeah that is two and a bit times yep. yeah yes so it's considerably more expensive mm. so yeah but it's that, that's the next step yeah personally would you go if you were getting into fishing and mm -hmm. you could do it with the rope would you why well, you could only afford to do it with the rope would yep. you do it with the rope and then later upgrade or would you hold off and then go straight to electric nah, I'd do it with the rope. just get it in there yeah just get it in there i'd do it with the rope eh? yeah but i'd i'd do it with the rope and a boom I, if i didn't have a boom for my dredge and i had to tie it off the transom no i wouldn't do it wouldn't run it I wouldn't run it i'd just run my surface chain yeah but yeah because thing is a dredge is extremely effective if it's set up correctly otherwise it's a right pain in the ass mm. if it's just tied off the transom on a cleat well the thing is you've got to get it out of the water it's a nightmare when you're on the fish it's, yeah oh, yeah and the boom oh placement of boom that's a probably another thing yeah like if you're running a on a trailer boat in new zealand and you're running a dredge boom where do you put it i know but yeah, um, you want it as far forward as possible, like up under the rigger really is ideal, or close to the rigger, um, on the opposite side to what you drive on. Because mm. you always want to fight the fish on the side you drive on, right? Yeah. So that gives you, if you have it in that position, it gives you all the way from the point of where your dredge is, all the way around the transom and up the driver's side. So it gives you a big fighting area. Mm. Um, if you say you had it on your driver's side, that eliminates you from fighting on that side pretty much yeah so yeah it sticks out at right angles yeah to the boat and normally under the rigger yeah mm. Mm. yeah i'm lucky on my boat i could throw in front of the rigger mm. my teaser and my dredge yeah yeah so they're like right forward yeah but that's the because of the smaller boat mm. and i can do that but um the one thing a lot of people don't understand is how hard they pull Mm. They pull extremely hard. Well, Joe found that out when he free spooled my reel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're asking a lot of these little reels to do yeah. to do these jobs. They're pretty amazing what mm. they can do. Well, I just will say one thing on that. Like, I mentioned it to you earlier, but with mine, because that was one thing that people said, "Oh, you know, I wouldn't go electric on your boat because they're in the weather. Mm. You know, like they get splashed and that because they're on the boom and they're out over the side of the yep. boat." And they do get wet and you know like last couple of days fishing here it got shitty at times and they're getting smoked with water and it was the same last year when i fished with them and then we have the incident at hokianga when we had a fish come up my mate pressed the um button to bring the dredge in the fish fell off and they was re were resetting the gear and normally i set the dredge but he went to set it and he free spooled it while we're doing seven knots and obviously with a six pound weight in mm. the dredge it took off and birds nest and he he's lucky he didn't lose a finger but he jammed his fingers like to slow it down and then what happened is the it ended up snapping the feeding eye off mm. across the reel which is a whole nother story because we ended up getting a fish and then the reel jammed because it wasn't feeding it properly and and whatever but when i pulled that reel apart to replace that part when we we're up camping um the boys sent it up to me that thing didn't have a touch of salt inside it yeah like i look after my gear when i come back and clean it but if that's in the elements and it's getting hammered like i don't pull the reel apart and clean the inside no and it was like yeah that, that meant. so i was like i was really impressed by that because a lot of people said oh yeah that's mean like yeah you have to replace that in like after a season mm. and it's what halfway through the 
well second season on now yeah and it didn't have a touch in it yeah yeah so it was i got heaps of faith in oh. them so for the people out there to think oh i'm going to spend the money because i don't want to have to replace it like if you look after it mm -hmm. like it'll yeah I've it'll work mine, well for you I've had mine for a long time but yeah. the other things too they're not doing any work they only do a little bit of work when you need it yeah you know like um and that's the other thing too is like the um the setup we've got now with the um the portable batteries oh yeah that's a good thing like, to talk about yeah that's um that's game change right because a lot of guys don't want to have to rewire mm. the boat for having a um having someone a, to plug the cords yeah, into yeah yeah mm. yeah um because there's a big difference when you have them on the alligator clips yeah as to okay. being a, like actually uh like, like a hard wire. yeah mm. it's huge their power difference hey eh? mm. you know so um those little batteries that come now are absolute game changer. Sea eh? Harvester? Do yeah, Sea Harvester. George, yeah. George, mm. is, George is the man behind those. Mm. And, um, yeah, he, he's got, I think he's on his about a third generation one now, I think mm. it is. Um, yeah, and they're pretty amazing batteries. Um, they last forever. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'll fish a week, won't charge it, and it's still on full power, pretty much. Mm. And, I mean, I've pulled my teasers in a handful of times, you know. If you're lucky, you pull them in a few more. Yeah, exactly, hey. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you you hopefully you flatten that battery. But I mean, I've run that thing heaps with a battery, mm. and um, yeah, it just saves so much wiring. Mm. Yeah, well, the original one, you couldn't check how much battery it had. Yeah. Yeah. So then, what I I was charging the battery mm. before every time I went fishing. Yeah. You said to me yesterday, I didn't realize the new one you can check. <laughs> Yeah. The level, I was like, oh, it's got these percentages, yeah. but it never shows anything, yeah. so I don't know if it's got any battery. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you just hold your finger down here, and then it's like lights up, and it's like, oh, it's full. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, sweet. And then fish, what, like four days with it? Yeah. It's still full. It's still full. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the only time it really draws any power is mm. when you hit the hit the, hit the the throttle on it. And it know? rips it in. Yeah. Like, that's one thing I will say, like, it's, they've got there's obviously a great power source because it's yeah. got a lot of grunt like yeah. the real cranks yeah on it. it likes it yeah it yeah. likes it more than the cord yeah. yeah like i've had the my boats wired for plugs mm -hmm. with the cords yeah. and that 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 was mean but then when i put the battery on mm -hmm. i was just like whoa and to even though my boat's wired for the cords i still use the battery packs yeah because it eliminates something else in the boat mm -hmm. to be in the way to trip over yeah. to go wrong like just the battery pack mm -hmm. straps onto the butt of the rod yeah like it's mint it's the same thing though i got them on the like in my boat in kona mm. i have the teaser reels in the in the in the top yeah i just have a battery connected to those each because yep. it's so much easier than running all the wiring yeah and then i can take it all out when i leave and there's nothing left there there's nothing in the elements to you know to age and yeah. weather and yeah you know so that, yeah i really like the battery setup so it makes it super easy to do so any anyway, like installation can be a lot simpler than than it was before having to run wires and stuff, you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, they do a great um, piece of equipment, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, real good bit of equipment. And they're great for, um, like, well I, well, I don't that much, but I fish between two boats as well. Yeah, so you can like, take it on any boat. My dad's boat and, yeah. and my boat. Yeah. And then, yeah, I can just... Um, and that goes back to those dredge brooms now that we mm. have with the adjustable butts on them. I think they're 10, yeah, I think they're yes. 10 adjustments on them. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's like everything I said before. You yeah. To get what you pay for. But, yeah. I mean, you can take that on any boat. And a lot of guys as well, when they set up their boats, and I've mentioned this as well in the past, is they have these brand new boats, beautiful boats, and their rod holder setup is terrible. Mm. And you're going, oh, well, you need to put more rod holders in and stuff. Well, instead of doing that now we can use these adjustable butts and yeah they're dearer but they're still cheaper than getting a boat builder in to mm. do a job on your boat yep. you know so you can you can use these adjustable butts and then also those butts can go on like you can take your gear on anybody's boat and mm. it doesn't matter what their rod holder setup is you, you're good to go yeah it'll work you know yeah yeah because what, what or how mine was on on my boat it was perfect because the rod holder was put there for that purpose yeah, exactly. so it's on the right angle yeah um that was put in the boat mm. purposely when we built it but then with um on dad's boat obviously the rod holder that goes into is more vertical mm. so the 
dredge boom actually came out into the halyard line so the yeah. halyard would be pushing on top mm. of the dredge boom which yeah. on a calm day yeah all good but you get a bit of condition and weather all of a sudden the halyard's fallen underneath and get jammed and yeah. you know what it just don't want the risk of that stuff going wrong you know no so having that adjustable butt's perfect i can just change the ankle drop it down it sits nice yeah. and flush with the with the gunnel and yeah mm. And also, must it's got to help with getting the dredge down too. Oh, like definitely. That, that getting the angle more yeah. level with the water mm -hmm. gets helps the line yeah. get down and in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So. Yeah, is there anything else in terms of like equipment that we haven't uh, covered with the teasers? Oh, the one other thing is like I get asked a, a little bit about the teasers is do you need soft ones or oh, hard yeah. ones? Uh, for the fishing, like fish side of things, I think you can run anything hard, it's fine, soft, fine. In terms of the head of the lure, yeah, eh, is what you mean? Yeah, uh, I don't think it makes any difference. Mm. Um, the only thing, I, only thing with the soft ones, why we make soft ones, yep. is um, for the damage in the boat, like because you just drop them in the boat, or and that um, you don't have any uh, damage to your boat or to the lure. Mm. Um, that's that's like super durable and it's like soft but it's still hard mm. you know um so uh i don't think it makes any difference to um the fish itself whether it's a hard head or a soft head yeah you know because i get but, guys telling me oh they love those soft heads and i'm like yeah but the fish don't know it's soft before it eats it does it <laughs> you know yeah so it's pretty silly <laughs> And most of the time they get the skirt too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah very rarely get the head. Mm. Well, but they don't crash bite, do they? they? No, until today. <laughs> until yeah. today. Yeah. Oh, we. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely something special. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, like I've got both. I've got a soft head and a hard head. Yeah. So I've got my submission, which is a soft head, and then yeah. my anaconda, which is a hard head. Mm -hmm. mm. And yeah, I'm just more careful with the anaconda because i know it's hard yeah you know what i mean so yeah. i don't i don't throw it around yeah it's not the durability of them at all like nah. the stuff that we make them out of is very strong mm. you know and it's exactly the same material it's just one's got a hard like a different mm. hardness to the other one you yeah know? um it's more just the damage of chucking something quickly in your boat <laughs> you know like you don't want to be like it's just not good to throw the hard stuff at your boat you know <laughs> So that's that's the main reason why we yeah. make them out of that um, out of that softer urethane. Yeah, well, with mine too, when I clear the gear, I fold my rigger forward because I can't put it straight up because yeah. I've got drop-ins. Mm -hmm. And when I fold it forward, like every now and then, I haven't pulled. Like if I'm doing it quickly, I haven't pulled the teaser into the boat. Yeah. So I'd be hanging out of the rigger, and when I swing it forward, it swings around and smacks into the side of the boat. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So it's. Perfectly, you know, having mm. the soft head is sweet because it's yeah. not smacking and yeah. Yeah, but as far as the fishing the goes, whatever, no difference. No difference. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. No. You know, they do say that you can get the hard head away better than the other one. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it slides through the mouth and the and the soft might grip, you know, in the mouth. But I mean, that's just the theory. Again, yeah. You yeah. know. I think it happens that quick. That. Oh yeah. If they either got it or uh, they mate, don't. Mate, if they right. get hold of it, it doesn't matter if it's hard, soft, or whatever it is, you, you bug it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. If they get hold of yeah. it and they want it, they'll hold yeah. on to it. I mean, there's plenty of guys that I know that'll tell you their stories of the teasers getting absolutely, like, just, like, smoked. Mm. You know? Being spooled on the teaser reel. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie will probably text me, well, every, like, month or two months and say, oh, I need another thing for my teaser. I just got bloody spanked on the teaser, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and they just, like, you know, you get tuna, eat it, swallow the thing, you get the marlin, get tangled up in it and rip mm. the whole heap of line, you know? Yeah. Well, like, Sean, when he worked on the Aranui mm. and they, they were bait and switch, yeah. and switching, they caught a they caught a marlin on the teaser. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, it yeah. put its bill through yeah. the Flemish eye. Yeah. It, came up yeah. like Flemish eye out the yeah. back of the lure yeah. that's inside yeah. the skirt went in there and jammed on its bill yeah. and the fish came in obviously hot grabbed yeah. it took off and the skipper's yelling at Sean get the fucking teaser off that fish and he's obviously trying to wind it and it's just taking line and then he just oh I'll just come up on the drag like sunsetted it yeah. and it's just and then he's like push the drag up and Sean's like it is and he's like, oh well 
<laughs> get the angler in the chair and they caught it. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. The chances of that. They killed that one because yeah. it was dumb. Yeah. It got caught with a lure, but yeah. out of hook. So there you go. they're like, you can come home. There you go. It's like 138 or something, I think. Yeah. 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 And they gave the guy the teaser yeah. as a like, rem- um, bit of memorabilia. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I think they cut the bill off with it still oh, onto yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, cool. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was that was a pretty cool day. Mm. Yeah, no, it was it was mean. Um yeah, that we covered much, pretty much what we wanted to cover, eh? Yeah, I mean, as much as you can without demonstrating it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know? I think it's just um well, I guess going off the uh setup podcast that we did, like it was really good because it created a lot of awareness and it was also good for me to be able to share my experience of yeah what what i went through with it and then i know how important the teaser system is and i talked to a lot of people about that so it's good to be able to get somebody with expert knowledge and yeah. who has the pool of knowledge you know because of things you've experienced and seen it's good to be able to ask the right questions to mm-hmm. expand on that so yeah. that people can be like oh okay like now, yeah, hopefully a little bit more awareness if they were sort of on the fence and thinking, didn't quite understand it, that yeah. now they're like, okay, I, I can see the benefit of, of yeah, doing so. Yeah, so it's all about the triggering different reactions in, in the fish. That's mm. what the teasers are for. Mm. Simple. Yeah. You know, a lure fishing up. anyway. Yeah. Lure fishing. Yeah. Not tease and switch. Yeah. It's different again. Yeah. Tease and switch, you want it long wouldn't you yeah so you, you got more get time. a tease on it yeah yeah, yeah. and you, you we you present your bait and everything's a bit different yeah <laughs> yeah so that's a, that's a hard, that's another thing that's not what we're trying to achieve with um with the lures with the lures at all no. yeah at all yeah it's very different yeah see i didn't even like really think about the fact of them being presented close that you get them hot and fired up that they eat going back and away yeah because i think about the fish that i've had good bites from they're either inside out bites or outside in bites, mm-hmm. not the ones where they come up behind. Mm-hmm. The ones that come up behind, mm-hmm. fuck, I, do, I don't have a good strike rate on them. Yeah. 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 Well, if you see it come up behind the tail of the lure, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like, fade to the inside yeah. and then come yeah. back yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially with the stripies, eh? And they come oh. up and put their little no. bill out of the water and. Yeah. Oh come on! Yeah, very frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, I get a lot of um, really good long corner bites on my boat, and that's the side that the teaser's on. So I wonder whether they're coming up the. But the you'll notice that, that majority of the fish will come on one side on the teaser, and they'll eat on the other side of your spread. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, like today. Yeah. Look what happened. Yeah, fish true. Came on the on the starboard side ends up eating on the port. Huh. Ah. Yeah. Majority of them are like that. Oh, true. Yeah. They won't eat on the same side. Oh, wow. None of it's not. None of yeah. it's like they won't do. Yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but more commonly. More common. That's what'll happen. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah. So I was just watching the side he was on, like a yeah. hawk. I was like, he's gonna smoke that yeah. trojan there, like. Yeah. And then we wound it forward to where we thought he was sitting, because mm-hmm. he must have just been sitting in the bloody prop wash behind yeah. the boat. Eh? Yeah, they're there. That's yeah. why, like, you bring that lure up quite often. They'll eat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's underwater lights, mate. Yeah. First yeah. day running them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and look at the <laughs> results. Yeah. That's another inside joke for you listeners. Yeah. Bonds gives me shit because I had underwater lights on. He's like, what do you have lights on for? You're fishing in the daytime. Yeah. yeah. You catch fish today? Nah. Did you have your lights on? Yep, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, today you're going to, let's put the lights on. Yeah. And straight away. Yeah. Much. Let's put the lights on and I bet you we'll get it. he's going to come up see the lights and he's going to pile on the teaser and then no shit 10 minutes later eh? yeah 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 it's uh the power of thought and yeah. that made eh? you yeah. know well i said what i say yeah. about the, an hour before oh yeah, yeah the weapon's going to get smoked on this yeah. pass look at it, it looks mint yeah. guarantee we're going to get a bite before we get down the bottom and turn yeah yeah, yeah no nah. <laughs> nothing yeah. I'll just keep saying something and eventually, hopefully, yeah, something will like come Yeah, it's like putting right. out that lure that you're like, man, I told you that lure would get it, eh? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, there's more good judgment than, <laughs> you know, luck than good judgment, I mean. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, 
But saying that, it could have been what the fish needed to get the reaction. Maybe. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? The whole well, he came from there. Yeah. Like, fuck, he was going back and away mm. on the teaser, mm. which is second wave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Phenomenal. Like, yeah. To see a 600-pound fish three feet out of the water, mm. trying, like, after he tried to eat the lure, yeah. like launch himself out of the water at it, at, at that teaser. I was like, oh. And then in a split second, he's around and he's back on it. Like yeah. how quick they can move for such a big creature. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's mate. It's crazy. Fucking mean. That's why like, you do it. That's why you put a fucking teaser in your spread yeah. <laughs> yeah. for that moment. Yeah, right and there. I mean, a lot of people will say, ah, oh, man, you know, don't put a hook in it, you know, out mm. there. But you got to weigh all the pros and cons up. Mm. And I feel that like the teaser um it, it's got more con- uh, more pros than cons mm. for my style of fishing and also as once again mentally mm. mentally i feel more confident having that in my spread because i know what it's doing mm. and that's where like a lot of the fishing comes is if you're happy with what you look at don't worry about it you fish mm. well it's like a duck shooter Do, how many duck shooters go to a pond and don't have decoys mm. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. Your lures are your gun. Like that's what you're gonna catch them mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. That's what you're gonna shoot them with. Yeah. But they like they have decoys. It's the same as the guys running those marlin decoys that they run. Oh yeah. You know, same thing. Yeah. Looks like a fish eating, mm-hmm. eh? Exactly. It triggers the others to come in and. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. having a feed. I'm yeah. gonna go join him. Exactly. Mm. So I mean, this you yeah, go on and on and like you know, then there's all sorts of other sorts of teasers, but we yeah. just stick with those two. Hmm dredge and your and your teaser chain yeah i think it's a pretty good um combination yeah yeah and then once i th- yeah just having that understanding of what the purpose of it mm-hmm. being there is i think will the listeners will take a lot out of that of what you're trying to trigger yeah for lure yeah. fishing yeah for lure fishing yeah 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 mean yeah man all right but that was a crazy day yeah mean day yeah mean day but um yeah so there, there'll be a few we'll just sort of pick our way through some more topics over time mm-hmm. but there's definitely a blue marlin one coming after yeah after today yeah. that'll be yeah that's we'll, i mean that's the topic i want to speak about yeah i was <laughs> trying not to take this whole thing to that every time yeah, you know? yeah. Like, <laughs> so that's the that's the fish that's the fish that ruined ruined me mm. you can see why now yeah oh yeah i can definitely see why yeah yeah, and you can see there's a mm. there's definitely a there's there's something like there's definitely some skill to it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No shit, yeah, that badass fish. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I suppose just for some of the other topics, I guess we will cover. We can talk about lure spreads for fishing different areas in New Zealand. Um, what we're trying you know like targeting blue Mm -hmm. marlin on the east coast west coast fishery yeah um you touched on a little bit of that stuff so that'll be you know that's another topic we can do moving forward they're both very different yeah yeah and then um yeah drag management driving on a fish like that kind of stuff the whole fight process Mm -hmm. yeah bite to fight yeah sort of yeah yeah but Oh yeah, I just from me, thank you again. Thank you for a fucking epic day, but oh. also just for your hospitality for the week actually. No, no Being worries. For the week, so it's always good no, to have you here, mate, and good to finally you know, we talk about it I mean we've talked about it for hours, mate. Mm. And then to go out and get our small windows of opportunity and be able to experience that, you know? Mm. We said today, like driving out, you're like, was it we're driving out or when we we're fishing? Yeah. Imagine catching, like, fuck, it'd be mean if we catch fish and then we do the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what Didn't I... think it was going to be a 600 pound blue marlin. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, mate. Nah, cool. All right. Thank you very much for your time again, Bonds. And I'm sure the listeners will appreciate that. Yeah. Welcome. I do. Mm. Sweet. Anytime. Hey team, hope you enjoyed that podcast as much as I did and you got some great insight. All right, so details uh, for the giveaway. You'll need to follow Real Tales of Sweens, Bonds Lures and Killwell Sports all on Facebook. Then you're going to head over to Bonds Lures on Facebook, like the 
episode post, tag a mate and answer these two questions in the comment section below. Okay, so first question, what teaser did our blue marlin we caught together come on first? And then the second question is, does Bonds fish with underwater lights on? Cool. So two pretty simple questions. Make sure you like the pages, tag a mate in the comment section below, answer those two questions, and then you're in the draw. The winner will be drawn two weeks after this podcast episode airs. Best of luck. Tight lines, and I'll catch you on the next episode.